Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last lecture, we discussed about the basic definition of thermodynamics and we learnt about the energy and as I told earlier, the energy is an enticing property or entity that governs all the activities of the entire universe. And today, uh, also in the towards end, we discuss about ideal gas law and we will have to see how this uh, actual gas will be deviating from the ideal gas law for that we need to uh, look at basically uh, compressibility factor or uh, the this thing which is z z is basically v actual divided by v ideal and v ideal i can write down rt by p keep in mind that this r r is basically the specific gas constant right this is specific gas constant right and this z if it is z is equal to 1 then what will happen if z is equal to 1 that means it is an ideal gas if it is different than 1 it will be real gas so if you consider this uh, z the compressible chat versus the atmospheric or the sorry pressure in atmospheric unit at different temperatures right 100 degree minus 100 degree Celsius, 25 degree and 600 degree Celsius, right. And if you look at ideal gas, this will be Z is equal to 1. So, this is corresponding to ideal gas, right. But if it is, uh, you know, different from the 1, like it will be real gas. So, if you consider this region, which is something 200 atmosphere pressure, even like if I consider the you know 600 even the ambient temperatures right green color you see that there is not much change but if i take something 100 atmospheric pressure right the z is for all this temperature is very very low right so therefore in this region if the uh, pressure is around 100 atmospheric pressure right for air and of course we can consider the fuel then you can happily consider it as an ideal gas that does not mean that uh, you know there will not be an error, but that error will be very negligibly small right. So, that you can apply. So, in all practical purposes what we will be doing we will be basically using the ideal gas law, but however there are several other uh, you know uh, gas laws uh, are being devised. Uh, which can be utilized for the real gas. For example, for you know some of them are basically uh, like Van der Waals, Redlich Kong and uh, Betty and Briesman, Bendict and Webb and Rubinic laws right. But uh, we will be using ideal gas law for our calculation because it is quite simple and elegant to use and it holds goods for only for the low density gases and for the combustion problem the temperature being uh, very high and the pressure would not be that high uh, if it is within 100 atmosphere we can happily use ideal gas law for our calculation in combustion. So, question arises how to handle the gas mixture. Right, because when you are saying the combustion basically it is not the one gas or the component of the gas will be not one like even in air you are having nitrogen and oxygen majority, but there might be some other gases we are not considering them for our calculations. And the product of course, uh, there will be several of them carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, water and then um, unburnt hydrocarbon, SOx, SO, NOx several other things will be coming into picture. That means, it will be uh, you know basically um, number of gases 
in the combustion products and they are during the combustion will be very high. Now, how we will handle those things that is the question. For that you know let us consider a container which contains like N A moles of um, species A and N B moles of species B, N C moles of species C and let us say N I eth moles. Then I can write down that total number of moles is basically N A plus N B plus N C and it goes on till the i th species right. And if I divide this uh, by the n total right and each by n total right, what I will get this become corresponding to 1 right. What will be this n a by n total? what it would be? Huh? Mole, fraction. Mole fraction. That means, if I look at this will be I can write down 1 is equal to n a by n total right. This is nothing but your x a right plus like x b plus x c plus x i right. And that is basically you can write down that basically summation of x i, x i is your mole fraction of i s species, x a is your mole fraction of species a, x b is your basically mole fraction of species b and so on so forth right. But this is about mole, but if you consider the mass right, then it is total mass will be mass of a plus mass of b plus mass of c it goes on t ith mass. I can do in the similar fashion that is I will divide this m total right and this is nothing but your mass fraction of a and of course, this will be mass fraction of b and mass fraction of C it goes on right. So, what it says the summation of all the spaces i is equal to 1 to n right, I can 1 to n whatever it may be right that is equal to 1. So, that means mass fraction of spaces in a container is equal to 1. Similarly, the mole fractions of all these spaces in a container is equal to 1. So, if I look at basically I want to now relate this mass fraction with the mole fraction. If you look at by definition y i is equal to m i divided by m of the m mixtures and what is m i? m i is nothing but n i into n w i. This is basically n w is the molecular weight. and uh, the mass of the mixture is nothing but n into m w mixtures right. And we know this x i is equal to n i by n. In this case n means basically n total you can say this is n total according to the above you know like um, notation. So, this is nothing but your x i m i divided by m w mixture is nothing but your mass fraction. So, now if I sum it up right, if I sum it up here. So, what will happen if when I sum it up this one, this will be nothing but here equal to 1 yes or no. That means, if I look at that means m w mixture is nothing but sum of x i m w i that means, this is the by this way I can find out the molecular weight of the mixture right. If I know the molecular weight of individual species plus the mole fraction of individual species in a mixture. If I know I can find out the molecular weight of a mixture is that clear. And uh, similarly, you can find out the molecular mixtures in terms of 
mass fraction that is basically 1 divided by summation of y i divided by m w i. What I suggest that please you know derive yourself this expression. Let us say this is your equation 1, I can say equation 2, I would suggest that you derive that expression and you reach is very easily. What do you do then for doing that? Here you have sum it with the starting with the definition of mass fraction. In that case, you will start with definition of mole fraction and then you will get. Are you getting? It is very easy, you can do that. Now, of course, uh, also from the ideal gas law, we know the n total is equal to P v by R u t. This is we know. What we will do? We will basically, you know, use this expression for the n total right in the oh i am sorry this is basically i can say this is equation i can say the equation a this may be i can say equation b right so uh, this is your equation 1 right and I can substitute these values. If I substitute these values in this equation 1, right, here what I will get in this expression if I put this thing, this will be P v by R u t, right, and equal to n a plus n b plus n c plus n i, yes or no? What I will do? I will find out this p is basically, I will take all those things to here. What I will do? I will put r u t by v and I will multiply it here r u t by v. So, this will cancel it out, this is nothing but your p. So, when you will do that, what I will get? I will get this expression right i will get what n a n a r u t by v is nothing but your what this is n a r u t by v this expression is what what do you call this is a p a and this p a i am using a small p this is known as partial pressure of species a this is partial pressure of species A. Similarly, this will be P B, this will be P C, this will be P I and this is nothing but your summation of partial pressure of I s species I equal to 1 to n it can be right. And what do you mean by partial pressure of you know for a particular species? From this definition, you can see that if it will occupy the entire volume right at the same temperature, then you call it as basically partial pressure of that species, right. And this relationship is known as Dalton's law of partial pressure, right. Sometimes people say gives Dalton's law of partial pressure, right. So, and uh, Dalton's uh, law of partial pressure is basically if you look at the total pressure of a gaseous mixture is sum of pressure which each component would exert if it alone occupies the same volume and the temperature of the mixture that means same temperature of the mixture right. And of course, these by this we you can really connect you know your um, uh, properties, basically the mole fractions right and if you know the mole fraction you can connect to the mass fractions. We have learned how to we can connect the mole fraction with the mass fraction of individual species and also the mixture we can calculate. But we need to also handle the internal energy of the mixture and also by knowing the species or vice versa. Right. If I know the sum of the 
uh, what you call species and mixture uh, internal energy or the enthalpy I know, but I can find out one of them right that way. So, according to Gibbs theorem the internal energy of a mixture of ideal gases right is equal to the mole or the mass fraction of weighted sum of the internal energy of individual component of mixtures right. And this is basically by uh, you know Gibbs theorem which is uh, you know helps us to calculate. As I told that uh, the Dalton's law is also known as Gibbs Dalton's law, it is employed to extract properties of mixture from individual species and vice versa right. And whereas, the Gibbs theorem helps us to uh, basically calculate the specific molar internal energy, enthalpy, you know entropy and uh, others of the mixture from the constituent species right. So, armed with these laws we can really handle the mixtures of various components of gases. So, let us now look at enthalpy and internal energy. A, a question might be coming to your mind, what do you mean by internal energy? Any idea? Or enthalpy, right? How it is related? Internal energy, you know, like it is basically microscopic form of energy due to vibration, translation, rotation of the molecules, right? that is corresponding to the internal energy right. And of course, uh, the specific internal energy of a mixture if you look at u mixture is equal to sum of x i u i where i is equal to 1 to n right. And this is uh, what will be unit of this u i or what will be u this will be joule per mole right and mass specific internal energy of the mixture will be y i by u i right and this is that should be a bar also ok right and this unit will be basically joule per kg this will be I can say kilo joule per kg ok and this is of course, without any unit this is some number ratio right the mass fraction x is your mole fraction this is kilo joule per kilo mole unit. The specific similarly specific enthalpy of a mixture can be uh, you know uh, h mix is equal to summation of x i h i and i is equal to 1 to n and this is again will be kilo joule per kilo mole and mass specific enthalpy of mixture will be kilo joule per kg. Now, question a question might be coming to your mind right, when I will be using internal energy, when I will be using enthalpy, what is enthalpy right, you are having a doubt. So, what is u i bar? u i bar is basically I am trying to separate the specific internal energy based on the mole to specific internal energy based on the mass right, because both are different na, right. Specific means what per unit something one is per unit mole other is per unit mass. So, therefore, you will have to differentiate na, is not it ok, otherwise you will be mixed up. Na. So, now enthalpy of species is basically you can say h i t and 0 i is the basically i s species, i can be any species uh, you know i is uh, just a symbol I am using, i, I can be um, nitrogen, it can be methane, it can be oxygen and which is basically function of temperature, this enthalpy 
is basically function of temperature is having h f at the reference temperature this is your t reference right 298.150 and this is known as the heat of formation this portion right plus the C p i C p is your specific heat into d t right and integrated over 298.15 to by uh, to some temperature it can be anything you know different than the 298.15 and this is known as a reference standard temperature and standard pressure STP what we call right is basically the reference which is being taken and this portion is your what you call sensible enthalpy right this is your sensible enthalpy associated with temperature due to temperature it will be changeable keep in mind that this Cp is a function of what is also a function of temperature it will be dependent on also the species for a, at the same temperature Cp of methane will be different than Cp of oxygen okay and this is heat of formation due to the bond energy right there will be some bond and that energy which is you know there with uh, uh, during the formation of bond either it will be released or it will be uh, what you call absorbed depending on that we call the heat of formation and is always being used as a standard right 298.15 kelvin and atmospheric this zero corresponding to what one atmospheric pressure right so and sometimes this is also known as delta h basically heat of formation i have re put it here hf 298 but this is a delta h now internal energy of the species also you can write down in a similar fashion right right keep in mind that this internal energy is a at a particular temperature if it is happens to be 298 what will happen this will be zero this side sensible enthalpy will be zero right but if it is different than the reference temperature it will be this sensible enthalpy will be certain values okay now i had asked this question when we will be using internal energy when we will be using enthalpy is that clear is that question you didn't answer you know sir when the system is closed ha ah. internal energy ka use kar sakte hain ha when the system is closed you will be using internal energy when but when the system is open you will be using enthalpy but why it is so open because it is possible to use plus tv the work hm but why in the open system you are using that form why not internal energy because enthalpy is equal to u plus t u that is a mathematical you know like some algebra but physically no, yes he is saying the right the flow work which will be taking that means flow is already taking place right you will have to pump so therefore that is taken care it will be easier to handle that's all. but however internal energy is already embedded into the system through the enthalpy okay so now we will have to basically look at enthalpy of formation and enthalpy of formation if you look at the amount of energy absorbed or released when a compound is formed from its stable elements during a steady flow process or a at a standard state right because uh, if you look at enthalpy we are talking about therefore we will be talking about the flow system okay are you getting and standard state means 298.15 kelvin and one atmosphere pressure which is equal to 101325 pascal and how what is the meaning of that this enthalpy of formation if you look at let's say there is a one o atom there is another o atom is coming together right and then the o2 is formed and then you know like there will be some kind of energy will be there which will be taken care uh, i am mean like will be supplied or will be uh, removed you know like 
depending upon whether the heat of formation is exothermic or is endothermic. Like if it is released, it is basically exothermic, if it is absorbed, it is endothermic, right, heat being. So, that is known as the enthalpy of formations and various enthalpy of formations, right, in uh, you know, I have given here. If you look at oxygen of the gas is 0, how it is being done? Because the whichever is the standard state, people assume that to be 0, right. And similarly, the hydrogen is 0, but whereas the water it is 242 kilojoule per mole, provided if it is gas, if it is liquid, 286 kilojoule per mole. The difference is basically heat of what? vaporization right so therefore one has to be very carefully use this heat of formation whenever you are handling combustion this thing you will have to see whether it is in gaseous state or the liquid state depending on the temperature okay so of course the others are given here these values you need not to remember but however one has to be very careful to use it right and let me look at now the how this you know whenever you are looking at this heat of formations for a particular temperature are little uh, different than that of the reference temperature or away from the reference temperature we will have to look at sensible enthalpy when you talk about sensible enthalpy then we will have to look at specific heat right when we are dealing with the internal energy we will have to look at specific heat at constant volume and when you are dealing with the enthalpy, we will have to work with the uh, specific heat at constant pressure. And for an ideal gas, even for the real gas, right, there will be function of temperature, right. But in our calculation in thermodynamic generally, we do not consider to be the function of temperature, the simplicity, right. But however, you cannot accept certain cases. For example, if you consider if you are using argon, helium, neon, krypton, xenon, all those gases, you need not to bother about C p as a function of temperature because it is remaining constant, it is a monoatomic gas, right. So, therefore, it is really does not depend on the temperature, means the C p values and then uh, you know both the speci specific constant pressure and constant volume does not depend on the temperature. But however, if it is a diatomic molecules like hydrogen, oxygen, it is you know depend on that means it increases with temperature and it is what you call non-linear, it is not that linear, okay, fine. And when you go to the triatomic gases like water, carbon dioxide, it also changes, right. So, now this if I look at this, I, I was asking this question internal energy, internal energy basically contributed to the translational, vibrational and rotational uh, energy of the molecules, right. And uh, the temperature specific heat temperature is caused by vibrational and rotational, right. And translational is does not contribute to that and of course, the argon, helium, neon and other thing there will be translation, there will be motion, but however it will not be really contribute in the and therefore, the internal energy of monoatomic does not vary with the temperature, right, because their internal energy is contributed by translation. I have already discussed this thing, right. Now, how it has to be deal with if you look at some uh, properties uh, kind of things, one can use the table, right. Another way the people have used also the semi empirical formulas, right. So, uh, if you look at they will be using C p i right and uh, is equal to a naught plus a naught a 1 t plus a 2 t c p by r right t plus a 3 t 3 uh, sorry q plus goes on like there will be several coefficient which will be and knowing this coefficient and this is corresponding to various spaces also this coefficient will be changing with respect to spaces right and then you can get uh, these values and then you can calculate. But however, it will be easier if you uh, prepare a table and then you know you can calculate right. 
So, uh, these are the temperature which is given here and this is mean for water right and this is the Cp values are given here and entropy is you can find out it is not only the Cp you can also uh, use for the uh, what you call entropy Gibbs free energy and uh, this is basically delta H okay. This is the delta H f which is the heat of formation which is there for this cases and uh, if you look at this is nothing but a heat of formation and this is a sensible enthalpy right. So, similar way you can find out I will stop over uh, this and we will be discussing more about the thermochemistry part in the next lecture thank you very much.